Brian, what's on your radar? Well, yesterday, the ruling party of Honduras conceded defeat at the hands of leftist Xiomara Castro, who will become not only the first woman to lead Honduras, but also represents a restoration of power by the left after her husband, Manuel Zelaya, was deposed in 2009 by a military coup that was backed by elements of the United States government. And in particular, was made possible by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who bucked the rest of Latin America and agreed to recognize the coup government's right to maintain power until holding elections. The U.S. role in the 2009 coup is much more complicated than in previous Central American coups, where U.S. operatives had organized the coups from start to finish. This time, the Honduran right wing, in alliance with the military, had taken the initiative, but had done so assuming it would have the blessing of the U.S. As they say, it's better to ask forgiveness than permission, and their gamble paid off. U.S. financial support flowed to the regime, which was a coalition of oligarchs and drug lords. And that support didn't slow even after the assassination of high-profile indigenous environmental activist Berta Caceres in 2016. Now, finally, the Biden administration has an opportunity to make some amends. And the first thing they need to do is leave no ambiguity whatsoever about the U.S.'s posture toward the new Honduran government. The Honduran military must understand it can't pull off another coup and expect the same result. Now, I don't expect the U.S. to change its posture toward leftist Central American governments out of shame for its history or because it's the right thing to do. In this case, it's simply smart politics for Democrats. Honduras has become such a colossally failed state that it's now among the leading sources of migrants heading for our southern border. In recent years, net migration from Mexico was actually negative, with the bulk of refugees coming from Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala. Allowing Hondurans to rebuild their own country and control their own destiny would stem the flow of those migrants, which isn't just good politics for Democrats, it's also the humane thing to do because that journey is the source of an unspeakable amount of pain and suffering. The United States could also play a productive role if it wanted to. We and the money we send down there are the major source of corruption. And the elements of Honduran society that are already working to undermine President-elect Castro are all, one way or another, on the U.S. dole. One phone call to each could check them and allow Castro to actually govern. Now, Senator Marco Rubio and his allies in Miami will throw a complete temper tantrum if the U.S. takes the radical step of not actively destabilizing a leftist Central American leader and instead supports her government. But the time for negotiating with South Florida fascists has long passed. We're locked, we're locked in a battle between democracy and authoritarianism. And in Latin America, the authoritarian right, as I talked about yesterday in my radar, now openly talks of the virtues of a return to actual fascism. It's a whose side are you on moment for the Biden administration. And it's also his opportunity to take a firm stand on the right side. Earlier this year, Jeremy Scahill at The Intercept took a long look through Biden's entire career on foreign policy and found that he was often somewhere right in the middle of where U.S. mainstream politicians were, and that often put him on the wrong side of history. For instance, when a military coup brought a junta to power in El Salvador in the late 70s, Biden waffled and took a million different positions but ultimately supported the new regime. The U.S. also used Honduras as a staging ground for its creation of the Contras, a guerrilla army it hoped would overthrow the leftist Nicaraguan government. The use of Honduras as the training ground led to mass atrocities there as well, along with the suppression of any leftist dissent. Biden, to his credit, opposed that effort. But Biden's most consequential contribution to Honduras' ongoing misery is actually his prominent support for the war on drugs. He was a leading backer of Plan Colombia, which dramatically militarized the drug war, which spiraled into what we have today. Under U.S. pressure, Colombian and Mexican drug lords combined efforts, and Honduras became a major landing place connecting the two, with drug traffickers becoming a lead pillar of Honduran elite society. The brother of the outgoing Honduran president is now in a U.S. prison for drug trafficking. And his brother, the president, Juan Orlando Hernandez, is understood to be involved in trafficking, too. A recent article in The New Yorker by John Lee Anderson gets at the whole situation well. The short version in Honduras is this. 
Everything the U.S. has done so far has only made things worse there, all in service of a foreign policy designed to boost the fortunes of oligarchs and U.S. corporations aimed at higher profits for those companies and lower prices for U.S. consumers. That's the basic structure of the U.S. empire, even as it plays out slightly differently from country to country. But what we export invariably comes home, and the oligarchs and the hostility to, to democracy are now a threat here as well. So even if it's only for the most selfish motives of self-preservation, Democrats need to try something different with this new Honduran government. What do you think? Uh, is the CIA dusting off the old, <laughs> the old coup books? I, I certainly hope not. I will say, you know, the Honduran coup was a little not quite as clearly a coup as some other things that have happened. Well, it was a, the military walked into the palace with guns and walked the guy out. The Supreme Court authorized them to do that because he was trying to seize He was trying to cha unconstitutionally change the structure of the government so well, that he could run for re-election. He was, he was uh, putting forward a non-binding referendum that would have allowed voters to weigh in on whether that should be done. So that he could run for re-election. Right, well, just, which is how you... Right, and the, like, Supre and the Supreme Court do. said you cannot, it is, it is, it violates our laws for you to propose holding not, this referendum. But they did not and say then they the... Told, and then they... They did they not say the military can go the, in. They did not say the military can take him out in, in a plane and fly him to Costa Rica. I think they later, I think they said that they did. Maybe, the, maybe they, maybe right. they... They didn't, and then they claimed they did later. But yeah, and the next government did the exact same thing. I'm sure the next government was just right. as, if not more, corrupt. But it's not like this guy was not. There was some corruption issues here too, and it was like it was right. a. These are complicated. It was not a. It was not as clear. It was not like there, right wing general reason. decided to, you know, just for no reason at all and installed himself but as dictator of this country. They always have a reason. Like yeah. when, they over, when they overthrew uh, Evo Morales in Bolivia, they, they made similar arguments. They said, well, you know, he pushed for right. an extra term that he shouldn't have been allowed. The Supreme Court allowed it, but the voters had not allowed it by a, by a couple of points. And that, then they claimed that there was election fraud. Turned out there was not actually election fraud. I mean, they, they, always, have, they always have some reason. Yeah. And... Uh, I mean, I don't think the U.S. should be involved at and all, you know, one you way know or the other. did call it a coup? Who called it a coup? Barack Obama. Yes. Uh, no, I remember I, he did. And, and Hillary's that was like, eh, we, don't worry about it. That was the standpoint <laughs> of our government. But didn't like, didn't we have some, I think some nonpartisan congressional agency looked into it and was like, well, according to their laws, it's kind of not really exactly a coup. Well, I mean, we eventually did support the coup government. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. and we, we should not be fostering right. any coups. Right. We should not be involved at all. Just to be yes. clear, I, I am as ardently to the left as you are on most foreign policy matters, yeah. but... Uh, you're, you're right, the whole thing was very messy. It was messy, yeah. it was messy. But the, his removal was condemned across the region other yeah. than by... Yeah, well, it was even condemned, by, even condemned by, by Hugo Chavez because Hugo Chavez likes when, be, <laughs> when people similar to his politics get to stay in office forever. Although I think he was dead by then. But. Was he? Or the Venezuelan government or the, the sequel government. All right, you got me there. You got me there. <laughs> anyway, uh, looking forward to what's on your radar up next.